Finally, we've succeeded. A permanent version of the drug. They do have a permanent version. This is terrible. This could change the entire world. Annihilate a quirk. It's right, a cure. right. A cure. This is Cora. Okay, Aman. Took us an entire month to create five bullets, with all for one gone. We don't have time to waste. This comes up in a whole bunch of shows, doesn't it? I mean, I'm definitely guessing a lot here. Like, I'm only going off the fact that he called it a cure. But that seems to suggest that he thinks the world would be better off without quirks. And a lot of the time with these sort of plot devices, it seems like the thought is, well, there's this thing, right? There's this thing that's dangerous and causes a lot of destruction. And if only it were gone, then the world would be fine. You know what I mean? But that always seems to miss the underlying problem, which is that it's not quirks that cause misfortune and suffering and wrongdoing. I mean, we do not have quirks, right? And we obviously experience those things in life. And I think the villains might argue one of two things. One being, well, we're just stripping people of an extra destructive force that's unnecessary. And another would be that, well, we're just equalizing things. And I understand the appeal of those arguments, and I don't think that that's completely wrong, but I think it misses the other side of quirks, maybe the beautiful side of quirks, which is the fact that I think to a large degree it represents individual potential. It's not an accident, I think, that the students' quirks and their personalities are very closely linked. You know, I think it represents something in life where part of one's own innate abilities and skills are like a ticket to destiny and realizing one's full potential, which is one of the greatest gifts that life gives us, you know, and it's something that is universally endowed. You know, it's those of us who are alive right now are at like the fingertips of history. You know, we are the currently growing tendrils of this long and historical cycle of universal growth. And that's not something to be taken for granted. You know, I think a more satisfying solution to me, and again, I'm assuming a lot here, than stripping away the great things people have because other people do not have them is perhaps to focus more on the individual journey and have faith that everyone at their best as a goal is maybe what's best for the world. Because by allowing people to use their intrinsic advantages, you then make the world that much more talented, that much more special, with that much extra potential. But I suppose I should probably wait until... <laughs> I know what overhaul actually wants. Not that it ever stopped me before. My name's Toga and I was told to come here. Is this them joining overhaul? The League of Villains? This is perfect! Let's brawl! I'll this guy. You. Yeah, no thanks. He knows who he is Sorry at least. Sorry about the whole Magna thing. No, you're not. It's unfortunate. I didn't want to kill him. You mean yes, her! You Don't make that mistake Ooh. again. Ooh. Ooh. Just follow my instructions like everyone else in the organization. But first things first. Little does I want he the know. Details of your quirks. It'll be easier for us to work together if I fully understand what you can do. Or does he know? At first, I was thinking that he's really underestimating Shigaraki, which is sort of a, a master stroke by Shigaraki in some ways, if true. But he seems very, very keen on these two. Why is that? I mean, we've seen that he's a cunning person. It's possible that he's aware of the risks of this betrayal and this whole like sleeper agent thing and is fine with that because he has another plan that will supersede Shigaraki's plan. Maybe Toga and Twice play some role in this avatar ending drug he's producing. Or maybe he's dumb. Who knows? Won't get nothing out of me. No way. My lips are sealed. What I'll tell you everything. Work? I can make doubles of anything. <laughs> For it to work, I need a precise image in my head. This is related to medicine, isn't it? To the drug. Toga also. They both have sort of copying related quirks, right? It's not an accident. Wow, that was pretty stupid. It wasn't me, Toga, I swear! And you? If I drink someone's blood, I can turn into them. Why is she telling him, though? <laughs> Plus, if I drink a bunch of different people's blood at the same time, I can turn into any of them. I can recreate their clothes, Interesting. too. But they get layered under my own, so it helps to get naked before I transform, which can be a little embarrassing sometimes. It helps with fan service, though. What's your excuse, though? For real. Did Shigaraki say anything about Oh, is this like a truth serum quirk? Oh my god, oh no. Nope. Okay. Crush them all to death! <laughs> You always have the shortest And back to the present. You get all mad and show what losers you are. We'll just leave it up to the heroes to deal with them. Clever. Pretty clever. Deku's having a great time kicking through walls. I get it. You want to hide how weak you are from the rest of the world. You look down on other people because you think it makes you look stronger. What is this hard-hitting character analysis from Toga? <laughs> That's the Yakuza for ya. Oof. Just digging the knife in deeper. So what did you do this arc, Deku? Oh, you know, I just kicked through a lot of rocks and walls. Oh, but he found them! The League betrayed them. Seems so. And they used us to aid in their scheming. Though, at least we're on solid ground now. It's pretty cool to me how much development there's been 
for Shigaraki, even with his limited screen time. I mean, they just look so cool here. It seems like while this hero crew and overhaul are sort of like battling on, on this level, Shigaraki and his crew are like up here one step ahead of everyone, which doesn't mean that's how it's going to stay. I am getting the increasing feeling like overhaul knows what he's doing and is like okay with this, which I guess is part of what makes him intriguing as a villain and, you know, somewhat terrifying and interesting because he definitely knows what he wants and is hard to gain leverage against. Like he's shown that he's able to dispose of everything that isn't directly related to his goal. And that kind of person often has a lot of power and is kind of terrifying to come across in life, even if the stakes are a lot lower than in the show, just because people who are not afraid of loss or people who are willing to sacrifice just often end up having more control in the dynamic. You know, it's often knowing what people fear or knowing what people want the most that makes them maneuverable, you know, that makes them somewhat predictable. Though I do think that works much better as a short-term strategy, you know, being able to dispose of everything and doesn't work long-term because people who actually do care, you know, people who do have things that are precious to them in life are the people who build things of value. And I think that often those things end up being stronger long-term. And I think that's probably why Shigaraki will win because even though he's less experienced, even though he has things he cares about, even though he's more vulnerable as a human being emotionally, that will allow him to build things of great depth with his comrades, similar to the heroes, which is, again, interesting that the League of Villains is kind of on this parallel hero journey in certain key ways. Eri Togata. There he is. I've been wondering when we were going to see him again. Give me the girl. I'm here to rescue her. I'm so afraid for him. But now Amiri at least knows his... His quirk, right? So he knows the danger, which he didn't know in the alleyway. Allow me to be clearer. Mirio's heart of gold is sort of a danger to him. You're going to die down here. Do you have a plan? Do you have a plan? Oh, but he doesn't know about the bullets, does he? What's or does happening he? to my body? Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, is it? Is this a uh, true serum guy? Uh, oh no, it's legs look shaky alcohol. Drinking quirk guy. Okay, it's this guy's quirk. His quirk okay, is to make you right drunk. Me. I just gotta get past him and. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. See through body, see through body. Come on, come on. There you go. That was close. From the eight bullets of the Hasai group, Shin Nimoto. Quirk, confession. Confession. Also from the eight bullets, Data Rosaki. Drunk Sakaki. man. Quirk, sloshed. Sloshed. They put someone like you on the front lines? Weird. I am in a different class compared to but the I also have this gun. in this organization. I'm the only one who fully understands the young boss's ambition. And I have a gun. <laughs> if I can make him lose focus, it's all over. Guns plus psychology. This guy is powerful. Ambition. He needs me. I'm his right hand. His most valued assistant. We'll share such joy when his plans come to fruition. Ah, but his weakness. He can get everyone else's innermost confessions, but he can't unlock the secrets of his own emotional blind spots. Because Overhaul doesn't care about him. Die, you nuisance! <laughs> nice. Ultimate Damn, move. he's fast. Fans on the threat! Hell yeah, that was awesome. I acted unforgivably in front of that little girl. Rather than see us get hurt, she chose to return to that hell. She's kinder than any one of us. She made a very That's mature decision. That's why I chased after her. And why I won't stop until she's safe. I'm so glad that he was able to shake off that that weak attempt at belittlement you know you worry about people with good hearts because people who are really kind-hearted i feel can be made to feel like it's their fault more easily because they'll actually consider their own capacity for wrongdoing and i like that his response was not to spend all his energy grappling with his own fault and instead his primary focus was very clearly helping someone in need no way how's he still upright you underestimated him of something much worse than your intoxicating quirk on the regular Ooh, my own standards my own self-standards i won't stop damn <laughs> oh my god that power just hit different this is so dangerous though. In order to hit him, he has to actually like gain form. Nice! That was so, so well done. Go back! Leave me! It's too bad he can't make things transient that he touches. I'm never going to let you down again, Aerie. He's gotta get out the normal way. I am going to be your hero. I mean I feel like he already is. <laughs> Lemillion. Got that one. <laughs> Well titled. I love what he said about how he deals with something much worse on a, on a regular basis. I don't know exactly with 100% accuracy what he's referring to, but I'm guessing it's something like 
his own mind, you know, his own analysis, his own reflection on who he wants to be, his own godlike standards. And man, if that isn't the truth, you know, like nobody can hurt you the way that you can hurt yourself, you know? And that's a sentiment and a feeling I'm always going to love. You know, the feeling of like, do you even know what I've been through? Do you know how much I've struggled? Do you know how many times I've nearly been wiped out yet am still here? What do you think you can do against me? You know what I mean? That's such a, a really cool thought, you know, cool card to play in any kind of danger or difficulty or antagonistic situation. I'm pretty sure everyone has experienced like extreme, extreme depths of difficulty and self-loathing and hopelessness, yet time and time again, find ways to get through that. And there's something so amazing and so powerful about taking stock in that and like giving yourself credit for that, that even in the most hopeless times, even without necessarily finding a direct solution through wits or whatever, we make it through those moments. You know, there's that line in uh, the DMX song where it's like, I've been doing this for 19 years. You want to fight me, fight these tears. You know what I mean? I just love that feeling so much. It's always going to get me. And who more qualified than Mirio? You know, like he was a nobody. He got himself to where he was through pain, it seems, through thought, you know, and grit and trial. There's no way that wasn't immensely personally painful. There's such a great pain to unmet desire, unmet goals and dreams. And you don't forget that feeling, or at least I think it's good not to forget that feeling, even when you get the things that you aspire to. It always gives me something to stand on. You know, it always gives me strength to reflect on times I've persevered during my worst moments. I am going to be your hero. And now get out of there without dying, Lemillion. How many times do I have to Leave. tell you? It's your fault. You break people. That's just how you were born. Go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Get out. You're a cursed human. <laughs> how could you ever say that to your own daughter? Oh no, pure heart. Pure heart creates weakness. I don't have any. He's taking the gloves off, literally. I, yeah, I knew that. It's not his daughter. Why did everyone just believe that? What did he just do? Disassemble and reassemble anything. He disassembled and reassembled the entire world. And you can't just leave because you have Miri or whatever her name is. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a big deal if she got hurt. He can reassemble if her. If I put her back together immediately, I can revive her. Speaking of having leverage, what does he care about anything? He just can control lives. I didn't expect he'd be able to use his quirk so precisely. It's obvious he's been well trained. Yeah, he's been largely self trained. He's amazing. He's the sun. Sorry about this. I but he still has a smile on his face, a true hero. Doing, I'd say that's Corona, Chisaki's right hand man. Sure, the non drunk one is Corona. Sorry, Overhaul. But he doesn't have to carry Ari at all times, does he? He can, like, put her down and do stuff. Put Ari down. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah, break right, her, right. He'll be forced to back off. Of course he would do Take that. him out. Monster! Nice. Watch my opponent. <laughs> it's his next move. Damn, man. That's fast. He's living up to my my dreams. Make no mistake. I'm stronger. <laughs> I'm never going yeah. to let you down I believe again, Ari. You've lost this fight, Shisuke. Don't Do let your guard down. That name so casually, fool. I've abandoned it. What? Why? Well, Why fade to black? Okay. All right. Attack on Titan with these weirdly timed flashbacks. Another origin that starts with someone being down and out and having someone extend a helping hand. That's such a, a large part of these characters' journeys. It's interesting. Stray too far from your humanity and you're losing sight of the old ways. No one's going to follow a demon with no heart. Master! That turned out not to be true. Shoot! Join the organization. Mirio, you better get the hell It'll be out of there. It'll be to have you with me. Those were his true feelings. Oh, uh, he just learned how to manipulate people. Mirio, get the hell out of there. Get the hell out of there. I only have one bullet. Get and I'm out of there. An untouchable target. How can I keep him from using his quirk? I'm going to make sure she has a reason to smile. Aiming at, aiming at Ari. Oh, oh no, no, no. I won't let you suffer. Not anymore. Knock it away. Knock the bullet away. Be like the sun and, I don't know, do something sun-like and great. And he has a smile on his face. Damn it! Ah! Well, he didn't die yet, but it's like a death in a way. Anyway. Save us Aang or someone? I don't know. It's, we can't give up hope yet, right? Like, this is a world of quirks, and so maybe there's a quirk that can help. And also, this is a drug, so maybe there's an antidote. All this focus on overhaul and his heart, maybe he'll develop one, and maybe he'll un undo this. That's too much to ask for. We just need more Lemillion. We barely got him, and he's one of the greatest things so far. It's, it's 
I don't like it. I mean, I love it, but I hate it, if that makes sense. But to the end, to the end, he had a smile on his face. And flashback. It's a really hard power to master. Yep. That's why your pops here gave up on being a pro. Oh, is that the same thing? Then I'll support you in any way I can. What the parents in the show. <laughs> Just do your best. And he did his best, for sure. Oh, why you gotta do this to me? I hate you. I'm offering the world a master. cure. I Ionic, it. isn't it? Master doesn't care. You're powerless! <laughs> Watch your opponent carefully. He just threw that guy aside. His next move. It's not his power that I makes him a hero. Powerless. Just like All Might. Yep. I am still the million. Damn. He still fights. That's Why? who he is inside. For the girl. Madness. For the girl, yes, but for himself. What is he? <laughs> He's the man. That's who he is. I'll do my best. No lies were told. Oh, this sucks. This is potentially the end of. Journey. Wait, what? what? Where did he just get hit? In his arm? <gasps> don't do it to me. Don't, don't do this to me. This power is bad enough. Stop it! Ah, I hate you. After credit scene, where he not only is perfectly healthy, but restores his powers and saves everyone, like the sun. My palms are. A sweating. <laughs> what in the world? This is such an amazing episode. I mean, it hurts me to my very core, but it's also so beautiful. And I think that's the point. You know, it has very similar vibes to a certain Irwin episode where even though there's something unpleasant that happens in it, it is immensely satisfying nonetheless because it reaches the apex of who they are. And that is sort of the point, I think. You know, that's the point of the journey of like the hero's journey and the character's journey. They arrived, you know, and that's such a special thing that it transcends the tragedy, if that makes sense. Mirio in that moment became the ultimate Mirio. He's like complete. He he literally is like a sun god, you know? That is something that doesn't happen often. You know, that's sort of the risk and peril of life that that potential exists and we're all aware of that potential at least on some level. And very few people realize it. It takes that kind of bitter pain that Mirio's experienced, you know, the struggle of life, the overcoming of adversity, the, the will of never giving up, the relying on his friends, taking inspiration where he can get it, shedding his demons, you know, overcoming his natural deficiencies, taking on challenges head on with gladness and not being bitter and being able to smile. You know, he's sort of like the ultimate form of a lot of the ideals in the show, which is simultaneously what makes it beautiful and terrible. You know what I'm saying? So it's really, really powerful stuff. All right, who's got a healing quirk and who's going to save us? I'm still fighting. She's it's all right, you've done enough. Just... That's not my name anymore. Deku, bust through the wall. Yeah, he listened to me. I love you, Deku. I I love you. Love you now and forever. <laughs> Get him, Deku. Man, I started this episode speaking about like the fact that quirks represent the beauty of human potential, and I feel like that ended up being very, very relevant in this episode because I'm assuming he's not gonna die. I mean, I just can't face that idea. But it does seem like his quirk is gone, and that is a tragedy, right? And it's interesting that that hits so hard because we don't have quirks in life. So why does it resonate so deeply to lose one's quirk? And I think it's because on some level, at least we have some kind of instinctual understanding of the fact that there's Im immense beauty and I would argue like divine magnificence or something. I don't know, I don't have the words. In the potential of the individual and what they can do in some sort of combination of what is just generally human and also what is unique to the person and where those two things meet and how they're applied. And so it cuts right to the bone to see Mirio get hit with that bullet, even though I knew it was coming, right? Even though I predicted it. All I predicted is death, not necessarily his quirk loss. It still is brutal to watch and feels like a legit loss. It feels like the world has lost, which it has. You know? But like I said, through the tragedy and maybe because of it, the ultimate feeling for me is just greatness. It's inspiration. Because if only for a moment, he was his own ideal. It was worth it. You know, all of it was worth it. Everything he went through was worth it. Because in that moment, he had something that no one can ever take away from him. He had something of pure and untouchable beauty, if only for a second. And maybe that's good enough. You know, maybe that's all it takes. And another good thing is that it'll be extra satisfying next episode when Deku shoots Styles overhaul's head right off and murders him. But that unfortunately is the end of this amazing episode. Before the video ends, I have to give a very, very, very long overdue. <laughs> Thank you to all my patrons for all the love and support. It's been a challenging couple weeks or month, I'd say. Um, I took a week off. I really appreciate all the patience and kindness there. I, I really needed it. It was a good time for me to sort things out. And that extends to everybody watching, of course. The outpouring of emotional support and 
kindness that I, I received when I posted that I was sort of going through something was truly beyond belief. And it's something I'll, <clears throat> I'll never forget. This is not the place for like a long story into that, but suffice it to say that it means more to me than I can ever say to know that there are people out there who are that good. You know, like this is the internet. It's not supposed to be this way. <laughs> You know what I mean? People are so cool, always. It's 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 scary, honestly. It's scary to, to trust it sometimes that people actually are great. You know, people are actually good and, and kind and, and loving, you know? People will actually pick up the emotional burden sometimes of being supportive and we can do that for each other. You know, it's just something that is beyond belief and I'm extremely grateful for. So thank you to patrons as always for the, the support and making this possible. And thank you to everybody watching for just being so, so cool and so, so great all the time. It means a lot to me. Also a shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon recently, or is it even recently at this point? CJ and Jumpy Guy. Thank you to everybody for watching. I know I've said this before, but things should be back to normal now. Love you guys as always, and I will see you very soon for the next video.